I will say though, that there, now that you're here talking about being scared, there is really nothing scary about following your heart. There is something very scary about not following your heart. Hi, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, you get my conversations with peak performing thought leaders, creatives, and entrepreneurs. We explore how you can innovate through creativity, compassion, and collaboration. I believe that innovation combined with compassion and creative thinking can save the world, and I aim to bring you ways you can do it too. If you're enjoying the show, I'd be super grateful if you can support it by buying me a cup of coffee. You can buy me a cuppa at buymeacoffee.com slash Isolde T. And now, let's get on with the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg. I'm so happy that you're here, and I'm honored and happy to have this week's guest. She's amazing. You're going to love her. Janine Bubli is a mixed media artist and creator of the ethical and environmentally conscious lifestyle apparel brand, Red Tail Moon. So you know I love her, and you know you're going to love her too. She strives to create awareness and respect for all animals, Mother Nature, and soulful connection through her creative work. Red Tail Moon's designs are inspired by animals she knows as well. Well, she's a she's a volunteer animal caregiver at a local sanctuary, but she also uses her heart and her imagination to create these incredible designs. She loves spending time outdoors, taking long walks by the water, and writing poetry. Janine, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm honored and thrilled to talk to you about your ethical stance on what you do and the artistic drive that helps you help the animals of the world. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy for this opportunity to share. Thank you oh, so much, Isolde. I'm so excited. So I, the thing, look, anybody who knows me for any length of time goes, yeah, she's she's an outspoken vegan. She's plant powered, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Right. I, I'm pretty far out with that. So the question I have for anybody I talk to about about sort of being ethical as far as how you interact with the rest of the living world yeah. is what what got you started? What what was the turning point where you said, I'm going to choose a path like this? Well, I didn't. I don't know that I consciously chose it. I feel like it chose itself through, you know, my soul, if you will. I um, started, you know, I was vegetarian for years and I started volunteering as, you know, a, an animal caregiver at a local sanctuary. Um, that happened shortly after two challenging, having two challenging years in my life. My father was sick. I moved out from the city. I came out to Long Island to help him. I didn't realize how much that affected me um, mm -hmm. long term. Mm -hmm. And so after the house was sold and I was like, okay, you know, where am I gonna, you know, what, oh, I'm not going back to Manhattan right now. And my life was kind of uprooted in a sense, my heart was, and yet, um, it provided a it also provided like an open um an open well an open space like a big vast bit of land you know in my future because mm -hmm. i didn't really know um which way i was going to go with my future and what happened was a neighbor um where i moved to um a neighbor said to me one day she saw how i was uh, how i was with her dog she said Janine you love animals so much, you would love this place. And, you know, they've got a cow and they've got goats and sheep and la, la, la. And I said, oh, well, I grew up here years ago. I never heard of it. And so the next day I was Googling and I've been volunteering there ever since. Wow. And so that was, yeah, that, that, that this experience that's still part of my life and will always be a part of my life because it's my heart um, really opened up my heart, healed my heart, calmed my mind, and inspired me to create art again. Um, just wow. being like, just being with the animals in their environment. I did not want to be with people at that time. <laughs> now I'm fine now, you know, but I just needed mm -hmm. the quiet and mm -hmm. just to be in, a, in a, um, an environment. Now, all of the animals are loved. They're not, you know, they're, they're fortunate 
their love and they're cared for and to be with them and witness their friendship and their wisdom. And when one of them is sick and how, you know, the other ones are there for them. Um, it's just really, really beautiful. And um, so that's what started to inspire me um, to go ahead and use them as the subject matter for artwork. Because once again, I was kind of reborn, if you will. Um, instead, I, they opened my heart. And if my heart's open, then I wanted to create again. It could, being creative it has always been inside me. But there was, I just kind of closed up like a closed fist. I, mm. you know, just... But then they, 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 it was them. It was being with them and their love and their sweetness um, that opened that part of me up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, it's so, it's wonderful and it's inspiring. And I, I know, I know other people who have that sort of connection and realize its worth. And you took it, you took that connection, and you decided to work on behalf of these wonderful critters, these wonderful yeah. beings we share the planet with. When yeah. you started, when you started that, that process of like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm inspired by this and I'm going to do it. Right. What, can you talk a little bit about what happened inside you that first time you sat down? Or maybe you weren't sitting. I don't know what your yeah. process is. The first time you you went okay that's it i'm gonna do this i'm gonna create was it a design was oh it, yes what, yes what so, was the thing that that and right. how was your how was your mind and your heart where were they when you were doing it oh well <laughs> this is a this is a bit of a story but i'll tell you so i um we had an adobe user group on long island i was mm -hmm. the co-manager of the group mm -hmm. and the manager sharon she said to me one day you know i was at her house and i remember exactly where we are now because you brought me back there and she said you know i would love to get our members more involved can you think of anything and I wasn't thinking, I was just responding, you mm -hmm. know, when things just come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we have so many photographers in this group. Why don't we have them take some pictures? Now there's pictures of textures, there's textures in everything. But I said, why don't we have them take some pictures of textures and then apply those textures to another image and share. And she said, great idea. Can you come up with something? I said, sure. So lo and behold, uh, the next day, I like I already knew that I, I wanted to use something that was current. I am a creative person. Um, there's like there's many things that they can create. But I wanted to create something from something that was current in my life, something that really meant a lot to me. And that's the animals. Um, um, something from my heart. So I said, okay, I'm going to just I'll go look through some pictures, you know, of the kids. And I took a picture of salt. She is a white sheep. And then, you know, just like when somebody's cooking and they don't measure, it was kind of like, you know, somebody's painting and they're splattering the paint. I was taking some other images, like even a blurred image of uh, image of some branches, if you will. Mm. I did not know what I was going to create. I mm. was just gathering material, mm -hmm. um, whatever felt something, you know, oh, I'll put this in a layer. Oh, I'll put this in a layer. And um, then maybe it, it must have been almost eight or nine hours afterwards, just zoning with Pandora. Um, I created this fine art piece with salt and I um, shared it with her. She goes, oh my God, I love this. This is great. Well, what happened was, you know, we had this, um, I, I couldn't show the process to the people, the, you know, to our members, because it was a creative process. I was zoning, you know, it wasn't just apply a filter and, oh, it looks like this or apply. No, this was, you know, masking and taking out and putting in and just, you know, create, create, create a bliss, if you will. And it had, it just, it was like a co-creation. And um, one thing led to another, and I was a member of Long Island visual professionals, a lot of creative people. Mm -hmm. And a woman, Linda, um, from like the Huntington Arts Council came one night and she spoke about um, having, there was an art, um, an art show they were going to have, a juried art show. And I had not entered a 
show in a long time. Um, my creativity, like when my father was sick, I wasn't creative. Afterwards, I wasn't creative until I was re awakened, if you will, mm -hmm. um, with the animals love and had my groove back. Um, my mother had passed, you know, years before. So there was another time when I kind of closed up in that way. Mm -hmm. And it all, it all goes into the creative, whatever we create though, whatever, even the, the, the parts, the times when we close up, um, that's also in there. And that's important too. That comes, that comes along. So basically she said, um, we are going to have, you know, we have this um, this art show coming up and I wanted to share if anybody's interested, it's about, um, you know, you can have photographs, but they need to be enhanced digitally or any kind of digital art, la, 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 la. And it was like somebody was tapping me on the thigh. Janine, you've got to do your art. You've got to do your art. You've got to, you know, you've got to do this now. It was talking straight to my, she was like, I felt like she was talking directly to my ears, amplified. Mm. And um, so I said to her afterwards, oh, I would really like to, you know, get some more information. I'd like to enter the show. And so she said, great, do you have a business card? Well, lo and behold, I had created a square business card with Salt's picture, that fine art piece from the Adobe user group program, you know, from the program, from that project. Mm -hmm. And she looked at Salt's picture and she said, oh my God, I love this. This is great. You should, you should enter this. Well, I entered Salt. Salt ended up winning first place. And that was the beginning of, okay, the universe is like, go, 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 right. go with, you know, and, and so that took, I mean, I don't want to take too much time talking about it because then like there was a series of different things. Like uh, I created a line of um, note cards and then one day uh, this woman said, oh yes, I love these pictures. They're nice. And I thought to myself, no, 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 no. These are not pictures. These are living beings. They might be a nice, you know, they might be a nice picture. Okay, yes, I could say yes to that. But no, there's so much more to them. And so um, one night before I had an opportunity to share a table at a local farmer's market, um, it, the, the words just like words and kept flying out of my fingers. I said, no, 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 I've got to go ahead and share more. And then I, you know, I cut on, you know, I cut up some paper, put them in the sleeve so that people would see, okay, this might be a nice picture, you know, and there's a nice animal, la, 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 but there's so much more. And then they would turn over the card and read what I had to share. And um, I saw it right with my eyes. They resonated. Some people resonated more with the words than they did with the animal, mm -hmm. which was, you know, a personal connection. So however, somebody's going to, um, feel a personal connection, whether it's the words or whether it's the images, um, that's the, that's the whole intention. A personal connection, um, makes things more meaningful to us. So therefore we can share in a different way, or maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, change certain choices in our life so that we don't cause any harm on really, you know, not unknowingly, but we can change, you know, um, we can change and make um, our world a more compassionate place for all living beings. And um, there's one more, like I, one more thing along the line of how, you know, there's like, it's almost like a spider web, mm -hmm. um, a divine, um, a divine weaving of interrelated synchronistic happenings or symbols or meet somebody. Um, I ended up having some I didn't have red tail moon at this time. I ended up having some of my prints at a local nature preserve. And now there wasn't a lot of traffic. It, people were there only on the weekend, sometime a few hours, but it didn't make a difference. I knew that it was up to, it was my part, like it was up to me to just show up and show, show up and share. And however, whatever, if one person sees something and they relate to it and it makes them open up their heart or they enjoy it or they might see something in a different way then then that's okay if a million people see it same thing it doesn't you know it's it's about going ahead and put it showing up and putting it out there and one day the woman said you know i need a i need a bio from you so i can put it with your work and initially i kind of felt um you know, like it's like uh, like a child or a teenager. Oh, I don't want to fill out that form, right? I felt that 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 conditioned response. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh God, a bio. 
Oof. Then I thought, for God's sakes, Jenny, get over yourself. This is your bio. You can write whatever you want. And so I did. And the words started flying out of my hands. Um, once I gave myself that freedom and the, you know, uh, respect permission. For, yeah. permission, yes, permission. And the words flew out of my hands and instinctively, or maybe it wasn't instinctively, it was like something that was tapping on my shoulder, but it wasn't a physical tap. In my, in, intuitively, something said, hey, go ahead and put um, a picture of one of the kids in the bio. So I looked and then I just went ahead and I put I put on um, Pepper. She's a black sheep. She's a very beautiful girl. Mm. I put her picture into the bio and then I wrote the bio and then I kept hearing the words over and over again. And I will just read the very last part of the bio and then we can like, because I know I'm talking a lot. This no, no, like, no. This, this is great. A, this oh, is great. Good. Oh, thank you. This is a long, this has been quite a journey. So I didn't know I was going to have an apparel line. I just, you know, I didn't know any of these things. I just knew that I know, I, you know what I knew more than anything. I knew who I loved and I love, I love the animals and I, you know, love is the strongest. So at the very end of the bio, I wrote, this is by, by Pepper's picture. Be someone who cares. Be someone who shares compassion for all living beings. If your heart is not open, open it. You may be in for a joyous surprise. I am no different than you. I love my friends. I cherish a safe home, a sound sleep, the music of the birds. Look at me. And then the equal sign on the upper right of the keyboard, I swear, I swear, I swear, was popping out of the keyboard. Look at me, I'm because the words are flying out of my hand. Look at me, boom, equal sign, see yourself. And that was it. And then I knew, I can't, I, like, I knew that was like everything in, in that little bit. And I said, okay, good, here's her bio. And then I kept hearing those words over and over again, Isolde. I would sleep, I'd wake up, tossing and turning. Look at me, see yourself. I go ahead, go for a walk. Look at me, see yourself in the shower, driving. I was like, okay, I, I, I have my hands open, you know, like when somebody's very expressive with her talking. I'm like, okay, all right, I got it. I'll create a product, and that was that was the beginning of knowing that I needed something that wasn't just not just, but something additional than a print on a wall that maybe five people will see it or 50 people will see it. I needed something that was going to be seen so that they were seen the way I was fortunate to see them and know them. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Uh, <laughs> and I love that statement. Look at me, see yourself. So the I guess the question is, do you have clothing lines with pictures of some of these beautiful yes and yes. do you have the quote underneath oh yes yes oh yes. yay I, okay i need yes, them yes, i need yes, them yes yes so <laughs> I, have, I have pepper pepper was my first you know and um pepper's picture and um it says uh be someone who cares be someone who, who shares compassion for all of the beings and on the bottom, look at me, see yourself. And I put my TM symbol there too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is yeah. so, I'm going to max out my credit card on uh, the tail moon, <laughs> I can tell. So so here's the thing. You, you, must, you must have faced uh, challenges and opposition to doing something like this, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what those challenges were and how you navigated them because it's such an important process to go through and your wisdom can really help someone else who's going i want to do this i want to live a more compassionate life and i want to put my money where my mouth is right but i'm scared so if you could talk a little oh. bit about the challenges of that and also about your strategy how you did it i would love 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 to hear it sure i don't know that i had a strategy in my head um, like I, you know, I like an outline, I'll do this and then I'll do this and I'll have a business plan. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, that's not really my, you know, my strong point. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say though, that there, now that you're here talking about being scared, there is really nothing scared. I'm scary about following your heart. There is something very scary 
about not following your heart. And if I did not follow my heart and say like after, say after my father passed and then I healed and I started volunteering and I worked for XYZ company and from, you know, and I was there from seven in the morning, you know, from commuting or whatever till, if I did not go ahead and honor my art and took and and, and took the safer, um, more supposedly like reliable, dependable income coming in path, I would have lost myself. Because for years, I've always wanted to do something with my creativity. I was always creative. I always believed in it. And I, uh, it has not, you know, I, I know, and like, I love my parents and, you know, it it's, has nothing to do with anything they did. It's just, um, I was brought up, you go ahead, get a job, you work up the corporate, you know, you work up the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. you make the money or you make the do whatever, and then you do what you love when you have time or, you know, it's just, um, they always supported my creativity. They did. It's just that, um, maybe it wasn't as safe, you know, and the parent wants a child to be safe, which means pay your rent, pay, take care of your responsibilities. Right. Mm -hmm. And go on a certain path, but no, no, no. Sometimes we just all have to follow our own paths. And, um, so I would say that the most scary thing is not following something that's deep inside of somebody. Um, I, that's what, that's what, like, that's what really has kept me like, that's, that's, that it means everything. I will say that, um, you know, resources, obviously finances and things, it does cost money. It does take time. There's trial and error. Um, I started off with a print on demand company and then um, it, the, the shirts were not organic cotton. And for some reason, when somebody said to me, well, if you're all about, with an ad, kind of like an attitude, well, if you're all about the environment, what about organic cotton? Nah, 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 nah. And I said, well, that's what I really wanted. And this woman from like SBA, Small Business Administrative, uh, Administration, she said, well, then why aren't you doing it? I said, because I can't find it. it now, it's, now it's a couple of years later, it's more readily available, but still it's not as available if somebody wants to do print on demand, which I'm not doing, everything's custom right now. Mm -hmm. um, it is more, it is more expensive. And um, yeah, so there's like, I, I, I've learned a lot of things. I don't know that I've made it easier for myself with some of my choices. I think some of the, like if I if I had created um, if I just went ahead and picked a plain cotton shirt and did it the certain way and didn't really care about the environment or whatever or did this or that um, because you know cotton it's not that cotton so 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 whatever I'm not saying about cotton but if I went ahead and maybe did what seemingly was a simpler way seemingly mm -hmm. simpler mm -hmm. I don't know that it would have um, really been um, a mirror of my values at the deepest level. And I was like, you know what? I'm not a kid. I've got to, not even if I was young though, um, I, I wanted to stay true to myself and true to the product mm -hmm. um, because it's more than a product. It's a heart, it's heart first, a product second. And you know, what's interesting talking to you about what you just said is that it's evident in talking with you for even just a few minutes, yeah. uh, it's evident. It, it's evident that you put your heart first into your product. And I think, I think you know, this is going to sound kind of um, calculating, and that's not really what I mean. But I think people resonate with that, and the people who need to be your customers will find you because they're looking for the same thing. You <laughs> right. know, right. they're looking for that same thing. And and so the question then becomes for me. How do you get the word out? I mean, yes, you're on this podcast and I'm glad to get the word out to, to right. the people who are listening, but how do you get the word out that you have a heart-centered business that is all about, you know, supporting and being kind and compassionate to the beings we share the planet with, to, right. to the right. other animals on the planet? What what do you do and, and how does it work for you? Well, I honestly, I'll be, um, I need to do more. 
I do, I do need to do more. Um, we were, uh, because, uh, and it's not a cop out because of COVID, but you know, it was always nice to maybe be involved with pop-ups. Mm. Um, we were involved in a couple of pop-ups. This way I could um, speak directly um, to the people, um, mm -hmm. whoever was coming by and share some of the story and, um, or even like just to witness people's reactions and hear what they had to say and hear their experiences with different either animals or life or what they resonated with and have them share. Um, I do miss that. Um, we were in three fashion shows. We were at a vegan fashion show and cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I can remember driving to Atlantic City and then I was, it was like such an exciting thing because it was my first fashion show and I had my flip flops on and my hair was like a mess and but I had the I had the products and it ended up I ended up having, you know, children models and, you know, male models and, you know, women models and it was just such a wonderful opportunity. And um, I, I remember that uh, at the end of like all the different designers clothing when they're presenting them, the, uh, the uh, founders or whoever created the clothing like me and the other people, the other people and I, they needed to go, you know, behind the models, you know, and everybody walks down like this little runway and they, they clap their hands and whatever. And I still have my flip flops on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, I had been driving, driving since like five in the morning and four in the morning, but I didn't care because, you know, when you're following your heart, it's like, all right, all, this is an opportunity. All systems go, who cares? You know, there's no time to care about that. You just want to make sure that, you know, the kids are, are they, they like their shirt, like, like it fits right. And they, they understand, they understand who they're representing. It's not just a shirt. It's, it's, a, it's a heart and a soul. And, they know about the animals beforehand that they understand the words behind them if they're wearing something with words. Um, so the fashion show and then um, so and then there was one at National Geographic. So I'm just veering off to the side for a second because that was a good opportunity to to get in front of people. Uh -huh. um, it was a sustainable fashion show at National Geographic and the down in D.C. No, no, in Manhattan, Times oh, Square. Okay. Uh -huh. Yep, right in Times Square. That was a big deal and um, very exciting. And um, Kat, who put it together, an amazing woman. And she actually gave me one child model that I didn't know I was going to be able to have a child. But wouldn't you know, as the universe would have it, I had a perfect shirt. Actually, he wore salt shirt, um, the fine art piece of salt uh -huh. um, in his size at home so I could bring it to the fashion show like the next day. It was just the way everything worked. And that was a wonderful opportunity to get in front of people uh, who might not all be for the, you know, who, who, who uh, that, that might not love animals or might love animals, but not love all animals, or maybe they love all animals and they have never known a sheep personally or a rooster or a, go, you know, and um, there was this big, huge wall and the pictures of the kids were blown up on this wall. So there was no way that somebody couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the models, you know, they, they were great. They were amazing. So, so that was a way of bringing them, their message and Red Tail Moon in front of people that might not have been searching for it, Googling online. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that was a that was a that was a great opportunity, and um, also it was a sustainable fashion show. And what we brought to that, I believe, is the concept of ethical treatment of all animals into the sustainable conversation. Um, we could talk about that after, but that was very very important because I um, that's that doesn't that's not always the case. There's a little bit of a disconnect there mm -hmm. or oversight, and um, I know that, um, well, we both know that I've got to, um, now like reach out to press and do those pitches and get it going and get it out there because it's not going to happen if I don't start, um, knocking on more doors, mm. you know, and it's getting, mm -hmm. I, you know, getting to that point. And I have met, you know, people through, um, you know, some great conversations on clubhouse, um, 
and connecting with some people that I've wanted to connect with and that will know or now know what I'm about and what Red Tail Moon's about, where if I didn't go ahead and knock on the door, open the door or open my ears or speak up in these conversations, they, you know, how are they going to know? Sure. And that, that's the thing is then you meet people who can elevate what you're saying and get it out to a bigger audience, which, yes, that's you know, really important. It and, is. And it is important. for sure. And yeah. collaborations. I would, um, there is a woman who's going to write about, um, ethical, I mean, not ethical. She's going to write about, she has, um, she creates, um, vegan handbags and Red Tail Moon's going to be one of her ethical crushes that she writes about. I so, yeah, so that's nice. And, and more of that. And, um, I would love to connect and collaborate with a large company. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe what, uh, Red Tail Moon's all about and the quality of the designs and the, everything about it, um, is worthy of that. And I think that a company whose heart is in the same place will, um, appreciate that. But I, I do think it has to be about heart, um, a, a, con a connection of heart mm -hmm. because th those are the strongest connections, you know? For sure. And, you know, I feel like Stella McCartney, if you're listening, you should <laughs> you oh, should, Stella, yeah. call me. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Here's my number. <laughs> that's right. So, so you said something about the big disconnect in this is sort of the sustainable conversation with respect to how we how we treat the animals we share the planet with. I can you can you talk a little bit about more about what that means, and and what the importance of it is as far as bringing ethical treatment of all animals to the discussion. Right. It's very, very important. Um, I just recently, you know, Hermes, um, they, they now, um, they just, they started advertising about um, launching a um, new line of bags of, um, you know, created from mushrooms, right? And so this was, I saw, I saw this on LinkedIn. I already heard about it and I had to speak up because, okay, it's great if somebody is um, trying new things and it's better for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. At the same time, at the same time, there are crocodile farms, thousands and thousands and thousands of crocodiles being bred in these swampy looking pools or whatever. Um, nah, you know, I don't want to be uh, pointing my finger at anybody. This is just, this is the truth. This is the truth. I'm not making this up. And nobody brought this up in this one discussion. Um, I said, well, this might be great, but at the same time, what about all of the crocodiles? And then they're going to be like skinned and to be somebody's bag. So does this mean that this company is going, is has a change of heart? So, um, which I don't want to speak for somebody because I'm not that company. So, you know, um, people can make their own judgments and I don't want to be judging anybody just, but, and at the same time, no judgment and speak up for those that can't speak up for themselves. So I need to speak up for the crocodiles. And, um, so the disconnect, um, like, you know, there's, you know, people, not people, but the sustainable conversation, I initially thought, okay, sustainable. People care about the environment and they're talking about the ocean, but they're talking and they're talking about, you know, plastic and garbage. And wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the fish? What about the marine, you know, the, the wildlife in the sea? What about, uh, what about the sheep and the goats and the hens and the roosters and, you know, like, and the ducks and the pigs, like, like, doesn't somebody, you know, like who, not, I know people do care, but why is that not being brought up in the discussion? And the thing is, with sustainable, people are, are concerned about the environment and global warming. And the truth is, animal agriculture is horrible for the environment. It's not even a little bit. It is extremely hor horrible. There's um, excessive uh, CO2 production, methane, 
uh, let's see, I've got, I have some notes here just to make sure that I pronounce everything correctly. Methane, nitrous oxide production. Um, there is um, topsoil, you know, like the, the soil they, they feed. Well, there's also like deforestation. There's um, the water supply. There's the tanneries, like if, you know, the, the, the tanneries, once somebody has like leather, like leather, so a cow's, a cow's skin, um, there's chemicals in that. They, they feed the, the innocent animals, they feed them all kinds of chemicals and hormones to um, fatten them up, to keep them healthy until they, they kill them. They kill them so they can become somebody's meal. And then that's, I mean, and that's the end of that. So I don't know if I went off on a tangent. Um, they're like, they're, we've been brought up. I mean, I did not know certain things growing up as a child. I did not know. I mean, I became vegetarian pretty much during college. Well, I gave, I gave, I didn't give up. I gave four, M-E-A-T, horrible word. Um, I said, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not eating, I'm not eating that anymore. I, I wasn't, I wasn't vegan then, but I just, something was wrong. I just like, I, I didn't want any part of it. And um, I, we've been brought up, we've all been brought up with advertising um, the, 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 like the cows. I mean, how many, how many people growing up or kids grow up thinking, oh, um, oh, the, the cows, the cow's milk is for its baby. I don't think a child thinks that. I know I didn't think that. Um, I just thought uh, ignorance or not knowing as a child, a cow produces milk. Um, growing up, you know, the, those pyramids, um, you know, make sure you have your milk, make sure you have your protein, the meat, the meat, the this and the that. Um, I could say, if they knew better who created that, shame on them, shame on them, because that pyramid didn't help anybody at all. It didn't help the animals, it didn't help the environment, and it didn't help people's health. If anything, it harmed every all of them. So um, now that we know better, we can make better choices. So with a sustainable conversation, um, whether it was at like the fashion show or a group that I was part of, um, there sometimes there were people that just didn't want to hear it. They didn't, or or and some people didn't care, and some people cared but they weren't going to change for whatever reason. I'm not here to go ahead and uh, tell somebody you've got to do this or you've got to do that. I'm all about, nope, live your life, freedom for everybody. And that includes also freedom for the animals. And it means freedom, like cruelty free. Don't cause any harm to anybody. It's like, it's, it's causing harm to them is actually causing harm back to the people because of, um, you know, the environment and, it just it's not healthy it's not healthy for them and yeah i could go on and on and on i don't know did i go off on a tangent <laughs> it's okay <laughs> i no you didn't go off on a tangent i think I think that it, it's such a huge topic and obviously one that you're so passionate about and one that I'm passionate about too, that that there's so much to cover in a question like that, that it's not a tangent. It's more like, and, and then I can plumb a deeper depth and go even further. And talking about this is, it sometimes feels to me like, like you're screaming into a void because yes. so many times I've had a similar conversation with someone who tells me, well, we have canine teeth, therefore we must, oh, you know, and gosh. I'm like, you know what, quite frankly, those canine, you know, silverback gorillas have much bigger canines than we do on the <laughs> herbivores. So, there you, go. <laughs> you know, so no, that's not a valid argument. But but at the same time, there is there is this feeling that I get that there is a machine a marketing machine and and I'm sorry if you're a marketer yes. and you're listening to this I have nothing against marketers but I feel like some of the really big companies have marketing machines behind them that make things that that put things out that make you think like doing what they say yes. is the only way you know yes. and so yes. so that's why when I'm asking you these questions about Red Tail Moon 
I'm talking about, I'm talking to an entrepreneur, a business owner who has chosen consciously to do something differently. And so then I start to wonder, how do you, how does any uh, small business owner go up against such a, such a, a behemoth of, of marketing as, as something like uh, animal agriculture or, or, and you know, and we even saying that honestly, Janine, oh, I'm like I, saying animal, the slaughter of animals for human yes. consumption, you know, so, know, so, it's horrible. so, so, so when we look at that, how, you know, how do you do that? What is your process? I'm probably going to, I I have to be yeah. very honest. I'm probably going to lose a ton of listeners with this episode, but I think it's oh, so I important that we not. talk I about hope, it. I, I hope not. I hope if anything, you get more listeners because I hope that whoever might not want to hear what we're sharing right now, maybe just some, maybe because it's shared from our hearts and not to go, there's no, it's not intentionally pointing fingers at anybody. It's, an awareness, it's a, an appreciation. It's coming from a bigger space than you or from me. It's coming from a bigger space. Of, it's coming from what needs to be said, what needs to be shared. And it's the people that are not aware yet or who don't care yet, which I, I'm listening to, I'm hearing myself now, which is like <laughs> that perhaps will benefit even more from you know, their 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 lives will expand. Their heart might expand. They they may have more. They'll have better health. I mean, unless they eat all those yummy, delicious vegan treats, and that's it. You know, because there's so many options. But nowadays, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the the it's you know, and even on like the energy level. Um, oh God, to think to, to think that I ever well, it's, it's just like it's it's horrifying if I think that I, I mean as a child and not knowing there was the disconnect and just nothing looks like what it is and the supermarkets it's all like it's all like a lie you know say it's a cow or say this is a you know just see the eyeballs hear the screams that's every every single living being you and i and everybody listening we all want it's like this. We all want a safe home, right? We That's something else I didn't share. I, I don't know why it came up now, but it came up. We all want a safe home. We all like, I mean, it's more comfortable to be in peace, right? Than, than anxiety around or intense things going on. Sure. Um, we all like to be with our friends, you know, real friends. Somebody who gets us at a deeper level to share or just even like, just to enjoy a a breeze on a warm day. Like I've seen the hens, you know, they're friends and it's a warm breeze on a, that's it. That's all they need. How beautiful is that? Um, it's, they're no different. They are no different than us. They are no different. They look different. I think some of them are probably cuter than us. They're definitely <laughs> cuter than me. You know, I mean, if I was called, uh, you know, like I brought this up the other day, um, with somebody, even the English language, like, you know, the, the how, okay, so we're talking about um, the big companies and advertising and things and marketing. So, I mean, maybe it's not just the English language, language and the terms used, including animals. Oh, it's a pigsty or, oh, you were killed or, you know, oh, don't be a chicken. Like, excuse me, but I don't like this. I don't like that C word either. I like hens and roosters because I associate C with the, or the store. There's, you know, people eat that. Um, but the thing is, um, if somebody called me a C H I C K E N or a hen or a rooster or a pig, I would be honored because there's no more like <laughs> genuine than that. You know. For sure. For sure. I, I actually have taken, I have a huge list that I've been keeping for years now of animal metaphors that I've turned into vegan metaphors. Oh, so, oh I so, want to hear. I wanna well, hear. The, the I don't have a dog in this fight has become I don't have a pie in this contest. Ah, so things like that I've gone yes. through and uh, I've, I've done so many of those. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, killing two birds with one stone has become petting two cats with one hand. Oh, so, love. <laughs> so, love, love, so I love. have this huge list yeah. because because it is it is about uh, awareness, I think. And that's something that I'd love to talk with you about is this notion of increasing awareness because with these sayings you know when i say when i say to someone well i don't have a chili in this cook-off and they go wait what? what and i'm like yeah i don't like to say i don't have a horse in this race i say i don't have a chili in this cook-off or i don't have a pie in this contest and so people go that's really odd why do you do that and then i explain and they go i never thought of that and Yes, you know, the, the horrible yes. one for me is there's more than one way to skin a cat has become there's more than one way to eat a potato. And I love these. So so that's that's what I've done. And so the question is for me to you is raising awareness. What yes. do we need to do, do you think? Because I do it. In, I'm a I'm a communicator first. And so for me, it's language in one way or another. And so I decided to do these vegan metaphors instead of using the animal cruelty ones. Yeah. And so so what is what do we do? What does someone who is a who's a creative in this way that you are? What do you do? How do you have those conversations? Is it that you let them see the art and then talk about it? Or is it is it a, a push from you? Like, okay, I guess the question I'm asking is, is it more of a push out to people? Or is it more of a pull in for them to get curious and then come to you? How do you do it? How do you have those conversations? I think it's both. Okay. Because sometimes the conversation happens, even if say I'm in the grocery store and I'm not wearing a red tail moon shirt or I'm not at a place speaking about red tail moon. Um, somebody might be at the, you know, they're at the checkout and, um, you know, they're smiling, you know, some people, most people smile at each other. Well, now we have, you know, masks on, so you can't tell they're smiling, but you can tell a little bit from somebody's eyes mm -hmm. and, you know, um, not that I want to have this reaction, but it's very difficult being in the supermarket sometimes. I, mm -hmm. I consciously avoid certain aisles. Sure. Or go ahead and, you know, somebody, uh, you're, you know, like at the checkout, somebody sa says to you, to, to me, oh, I'm, you know, I'm smiling under this mask. And I say, oh, yeah, great. You know, hope you're having a nice day. And if I happen to see a, a piece of my friend's body, <laughs> uh, it's not funny at all. It's kind of horrifying mm -hmm. in their cart. Um, automatically and it's unconscious i'm sure that i've got this not wanting to what uh, offend them but it offends me but sure. i don't want somebody else's actions to offend me but it does it's you know it's like somebody's child you know if they if, if there was somebody's child in there they would they would understand and then they, they might say because this is happening only a couple of times um oh is there something the matter and i said well i happen you know i happen to love all animals and take this from heart um that's like that's my that's my part of my friend's body in there and um so um you know i hope you enjoy your day i mean what am i going to say mm -hmm. but with the shirts you know um there's a strong message in there so the reason I did not consciously say, oh, I'm going to, well, Pepper was the first, you know, and her, she had a message of compassion. And then I wanted more messages of compassion. Um, but I also used Salt's art piece um, from that was from the beginning, right? From, mm -hmm. you know, with the, um, the Adobe user group. And that it kind of came together. It didn't consciously come together. It came together and it's, like it has a life of its own, if you will. And I saw that I had messages of compassion and people could connect with the animals by reading a message of compassion. They don't, my, the messages don't say, um, you're a horrible person because you're eating my friend. I, I'm not gonna do that. Who am I to judge? I, I mean, who am I? I mean, I, I'm not miss whatever. Uh, I'm human too, and I didn't know any better before because I think if I did, I think I would have changed. I would hope I would have changed, you know? And um, then find art pieces, artsy pieces that somebody might um, resonate with because it's artistic looking and it's pretty. And there's an um, underlying um, uh, intention of connecting with each animal. Um, 
through an art piece as well. And then there's the messages, you know, there's original poetry. Um, and then there's, um, you know, the bold text, text is a bold statement, like the ethic L. Um, that's also, you know, text is a bold statement. So there's different ways through the, the different designs of connecting with different, um, a different audience, if you mm -hmm. will. That, mm -hmm. That's what I hope. That's what I hope. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, so other ways I know that, well, when I'm at, when I'm at the farm where I, I volunteer, which is a sanctuary now, it was a dairy barn years ago. Um, when people come and visit, sometimes, you know, they, they might see, you know, they might come a few times, they might come more than a few times, it might be their first time. So if I'm there and I'm able to, I like to share a little bit about the animal's personality. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely get, have them get eye level. Like um, we have this amazing turkey, Liberty. Well, we all, the, all of the turkeys are amazing. And um, this little girl was visiting with her parents and I said, oh, come over here, you know, you can, you know, I'll have you meet, you know, Liberty. and. So the little girl, like she's standing there, but you know, Liberty of course is a little bit shorter than a little girl. And I said, you know, and I was already crouched down. I said, you know what? Why don't you all crouch down? So we're all at the same level. And then you can look right into her eyes. And then the little girl started going, oh my God, oh my God, she's such a cutie patootie. Ah! I said, you love her, don't you? She goes, yeah. Now, I don't know how happy her parents were, if they were going to have whatever for dinner or whatever, but you know what? She connected. And so, right. I, I mean, in other places, you know what? I feel like it's, I think like for you too, it's where everywhere we go, you know? It's an opportunity for sure, I think. And and yet the, the thing is for me, like I until I until I became a vegetarian and I I will save that story for another day I think I've done a podcast episode about it I <coughs> excuse me I ate yeah. a lot of animals I I, yes. I I have to admit that yeah and and I and you know what I can feel bad about it for only so long because I think feeling bad about it for me anyway is a it's a waste of energy because I did it I accept yeah. it and now I can do better and I think that's a lot of what this is for me you know yes. accept yes. that you were capable of what you did resolve to do better and then act on that resolution so when you do that when you when you yourself resolve to do better whatever that means for you yeah uh, what forms does it take in your daily life when I resolve to do better mm -hmm. by me, mm -hmm. well, just like what you said, you know, not to, to not rehash certain things because it doesn't, it doesn't um, change anything because mm -hmm. our past, I mean, I ate animals as a child and as a teenager. Um, I wish I didn't. I really do wish I didn't. Um, but I did. And I wasn't as conscious of certain things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I became, and then I changed. Um, the past is really over for, I mean, yesterday and any day before those days are, they could be great memories or not great memories. They're not our today, um, mm -hmm. except for what we choose to bring with us. So I can catch myself in certain thoughts sometimes, or, oh, you know, maybe I should have done this, or I could have done this, or even with red tail moments, like, oh, I spent most of my resources, like, excuse my language, but can, we, can I curse on here? Of course. <laughs> I was like, fuck, now what am I going to do? I went ahead because I was like, fuck, you know, because I've had symbols from the universe, if you will, and I've had um, amazing, magical things happen in my life. And I've also put myself kind of into um, a bit of a um, challenging uh, temporary uh, predicament, if you will, at times too. Um, so what I don't, I would say that, um, what do I do? I go back to my reason why. Does that, does that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, if that's your answer, yes. <laughs> I mean, I right. mean you know, yeah, it's, um, I think that's a great answer. I think going back to basics, what, why am I doing what I'm doing? What is, what are the reasons I'm doing it? Yeah. That makes so much sense to me on some very deep levels, because I think that sort of introspection 
when you face yourself with honesty and heart, you can't lie to yourself, you know, and we're really That's good right. at, at deluding ourselves oh, as, as, I, as, I'm, as a, as a species, yes, you know, yeah, I can be good at that. Yeah. yeah. I think everybody can. I don't think yeah. there's anybody who, who has not lied to themselves every once in a while, but in your heart of hearts, you know, the truth. So you can mm -hmm. lie to yourself only so long before you have to pay the piper and the piper is you. So at some point you kind of go, well, I'm going to have to face this, whatever the, this is. And we all have a different path there to that, yes. to that point, you know? So, yes. Yes. So the question that I have, you, you mentioned Ethical for a, a little bit ago, and I would love yes. it if you would talk a little bit about that because the, the photograph that we took together, I take a little screenshot so that people can see what's going to be on the show coming up. So right, it's going right. to go up a little bit later today. Oh, you I'm were so wearing, excited. Yeah, it's so exciting. It's so, I, love, I love having those little pictures that say, look who's going to be on the show, yay. So <laughs> talk to me, and you're wearing an Ethic Al shirt i'd love it if yes. you could talk a little bit about what that is and and what what inspired you what was the what was the moment and the creative spark that got you there oh sure sure so i was sitting in this big chair that i've got and i um you know i've been frustrated or challenged with acceptance um with that disconnect of ethical treatment of all animals being included in this the, in quotes, sustainable conversation, why it's been um, either disconnected or overlooked. I think like an oversight, I think it might be um, uncomfortable. Um, people don't want to bring it up. They don't want to stir up whatever it is. And yet it, it's important for every reason. For mm -hmm. me, animals first. Um, so I was sitting on a chair and I, I, I happened to, I was just, you know, chilling a bit and I was like, ethical, my eyes closed. I was like, ethical, 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 ethical. Ah, oh, I saw it. I saw it. It's old. I saw, I saw a design. My eyes were closed and I saw in my eye, through my eyes, I saw this design, ethic L. So I went straight over to my computer and opened up Illustrator. And I typed up exactly what I saw with the bold font and the scripty part and the accent mark on the L and the last E. And I know that's not the correct accent mark in French and I'm okay with that. It's artistic license. That's what I saw. That's what came to me. And it was um, so strong. It was like, look at me, see yourself. When I knew there was something there, I'm like, that's it. That says everything. When Epic Elk came to me, um, I was like, that's it. And it's something that I know needs to be out there more. And so it says um, the design, Epic L, a strong and confident woman whose compassionate heart includes love. Wait, I'm sorry. Love and respect for all animals and mother nature. I love yeah. that so much. I need that shirt. I'm again, I'm going to max out my credit card. I think that's so <laughs> that's so that's right that's at the heart of what I believe. So you're speaking directly to my heart when you when you read that. Oh, you. you know, what I really want to honor for a second here and I think it's so important to do this is that you listen to your inspirations. That you went Oh, I see it. I know it. And you didn't go, ah, nah, never mind. Or, oh, it won't be any good. Or, oh, I'm right. going to discount it. Or, oh, I have to go wash the dishes. You stopped and you went, yeah. let me put this down so that I have it, so that I honor that yes. creative spark when it comes. And yes. I'm wondering, do you have uh, just, do you, is it just who you are that that happens? Or do you have any sort of creative practice or any sort of I'm oh. going to build an awareness for this so that yes. I can grab it when it comes? What What is your process well, there? I would say that creativity like that comes when it wills, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's like a spiritual, spiritual connection. It's like a connection with something much greater than me. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have a spiritual practice. I've always been on um, spiritual. Um, in the sense that um, organized religion was never, never did it for me. Mm -hmm. But if I was out in nature, that did it for me. Or being creative, that did it for me. Um, a universal truth, that did it for me. Something that was all inclusive. And um, so I, I, you know, I journal. 
most mornings I, I journal. I think you mentioned Julia Cameron once, the, the artist way. So oh, yes. I've had many, many books and books and journals and things. And I remember even once moving um, from New Jersey back into Manhattan and having like all of these journals in my closet. And I said, oh, I looked at them and I said, oh, you know what? You need to go because I've lived you and it's okay to release you. So um, as far as the spiritual practice, I've also recently, this is after all of these creations, but I have um, very happily um, noticed more synchronicity in my life this mm -hmm. past month. Mm -hmm. I started meditating again. Um, I love, there's a Insight Timer, there's an app that happened. Oh, I love Insight Timer, yes. I love it, right? It's great. And um, they have, you know, you don't, you can pay for it or if there's a million uh, meditations that are you don't have to pay for and it's great there's a great variety and um yeah so I really love that so I've been doing that so I meditate now I uh, it doesn't have to be hours and hours and hours a bit in the morning before I get out of bed I go ahead make my tea I journal um and the evening before I go to sleep just recently like in the last week I started listening listening to something before I go to sleep I'm always mm -hmm. like asleep before it's there. And I also have Tibetan singing bowls. I love them. And aren't they the best? Yes. Yes. I had a whole set at one point. I love them. Oh, wow. Yes. And the vibrations from the singing bowls is as if the ocean is, it's like an ocean, like ocean. I, I feel like it's an ocean kind of a roar, but it doesn't not, it re, it's this bite back and forth and ooh, ooh, ooh it like sounds much better than that. Not like I sound like, I know what I sound like, but it's a very, very powerful, energetic vibe that, um, yeah, that, that also that uh, whenever, you know, I bring that into my life, um, that also increase, it increases the creativity, uh, things that come to me um, visually, um, word wise, um, just feel connected and more um, at peace, if you will, not mm -hmm. scattered or blocked. I feel open, open. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love that notion of being being mindful and letting the creativity flow from that space. I, I've gotten increasingly fascinated by the space between when an idea strikes and when you put words to it. You know, mm. in that in that instant, you can discount it completely or you can go, no, no, no I'm going to stay open to this and see what happens. And yes. it sounds to me like you have, like you have embraced that aspect of you. And I, I have an entire framework that I talk about with my coaching clients about how we can be agile, innovative, and mindful. And that is what leads to gratitude. And that is what leads to inspiration. And that is what leads to happiness and, and increased health, all sorts of things. Yes, and so, yes. so when you do that, when you're in that, and when you're in that head and heart space of creating, this is a strange little question. Do you lose time? Yes. There's no sense of, there is no sense of time at all. I mean, there's, Hours can go by. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it can, uh, anything, it, there's only a few time, a few um, cases when that happens lo to lose sense of time. It's being with the animals, it's being in nature, and it's when something creative um, bursts itself through us, right? Mm -hmm. Through me. Mm -hmm. It's like, it has a life of its own. And also, everything's okay. It's, everything is okay. It's not a, oh, I've got to do this or, oh, shoot, how am I going to do that? Or it's like, it's, it's a knowing, it's a deep knowing that no matter what, everything's okay. Keep on going. It's not about what comes back from the outside. Just keep on going and mm -hmm. trust um, because there is a journey that all of us, you know, we all have our own unique journeys. We might all feel love and happiness or sadness and all different things, but we do all have our own unique journey and it's up to us to honor what's deep inside of us. No matter what, everybody has something to share, um, that is not only valuable to them, but that can actually also help others, you know? Absolutely. And I feel like 
what you just said really doves, dovetails beautifully into, and there's an animal metaphor I have to think uh, of a different one now. Uh, <laughs> because because every time I notice myself saying them, I go, oh, that's another one you have to change. So uh, so the 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 thing about that is that it does it's it, it's going to coincide some with this notion of allowing yourself to be conscious about the contributions that you make, right? So so on some yes. level, yes, we all have our own journey, but I think one of the signs of knowing yourself yes. is also knowing choosing how you will participate in in this life yes so so there there's something so powerful there to me with what you just said about that because because it really does relate very well to being a conscious participant in your life yes. rather than almost an a bystander or or, <coughs> or an observer hold on one second Ooh. sure sure <coughs> i'm gonna have to quiet myself down here because i'm coughing like a oh. maniac here Maybe get some water. Oh, I'm drinking water, but sometimes when I don't know if this happens to you, but sometimes when I get really passionate about what I'm Me saying, too. I get that too. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. So, and I'm very, you, I'm very passionate about this subject. I think, I think the notion of living, um, it's weird to say cruelty free because, because we, we don't, I don't think anybody wants to go, or, or maybe. Maybe there are some people who do, but I think a lot of us, most of us don't want to think of ourselves as being cruel. And yet there, there are times we have to face some pretty hard truths about who we are. Yes. And that's not, again, it's not a judgment. It's more no. of a fact. Everybody has to face, like you said, we all have contribution we can make and everybody has to face themselves and yes. and their their beliefs and their behaviors and no one no one else can do it for you on some level so yes, so, so i'm so grateful that you have been here willing to share your story and your wisdom and i'd love to ask oh i love the bird in the background that was great oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, appropriate <laughs> yeah i can hear it that's beautiful Isn't i love that? it oh beautiful i i'm a huge fan of bird calls even though i don't i don't know uh, I don't know how to differentiate too many of them, but I, I think they're beautiful. I'm so very happy that you're, you're here and giving this opportunity to me and to all your listeners. Oh, to share. that's, that's very sweet. Thank you. My goodness. I love it. Very close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the bird's going, I've got something to say here too. So, uh, that's so, right. so what's next for you and for Red Tail Moon? What's next for me is getting off my, you know what? and reaching out to no it's true it's true it's been like it sometimes things sometimes it's easier to walk forward because there's something there and sometimes mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable not to walk forward mm -hmm. and i'm at that place where it's uncomfortable not to go ahead and give it everything that it's got because mm -hmm. it's every it does mean everything to me so i'm planning on yes i will do it um go ahead and send some pictures out um to different uh media mm -hmm. and see how i can collaborate with stella are you there stella mccartney stella or... mccartney we're calling you <laughs> yes um stella or somebody else like that um that might have the wisdom or things that know things that i don't know in maybe the retail industry to get it to where it really deserves to be Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I'm open to collaborations. If anybody, anybody listening to this has any uh, comments or suggestions or conversation or, or you know, wants to know um, what is so incredibly special about spending quiet time with sheep or not quiet time or anything. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really open. I'm an open heart and uh, book right now. Well, so so there, there's there you you're you're leading me beautifully down this particular path. How can someone who is interested in finding out more about Red Tail Moon find you? Oh, sure. So you can go to um, well, I'm on Instagram um, at Red Tail Moon. So Red Tail Moon is spelled R E D T A L E M O O N. Tail like the moon. Um, it is in honor of the red tail hawk. 
um, that's a whole other story, but Red Tail Moon on Instagram. Red Tail Moon is also on Facebook. I do not do a lot of things with Facebook, but um, I guess I probably will. Um, and also um, Red Tail Moon at gmail.com and my website, which is www.redtailmoon. And then you get to see um, the different designs that we spoke about and um, you know, some pictures of the journey so far. And on Clubhouse, I'm at Janine Boobly. So that's at, um, you know, the at symbol, Janine, J-E-A-N-I-N-E. Be like boy, O-U, be like boy, L-I. And there are, there's been some interesting conversations, great conversations on Clubhouse. So um, connect with me anyway, uh, any, any way, anywhere, I would love to hear from you. Uh, and I'm going to have to find you on Clubhouse, too, so uh, <laughs> because I don't yes. think we're connected on there yet. Yeah. And and the, the thing about this, I'm going to put all of these on the show notes, but I find that it's also really good if you say it because people learn different in different ways. Yes. So you'll be able to find these links on the show notes and you'll be able to also, if you heard them and you want to write them down, find Janine. Obviously, she's doing amazing, incredible, inspiring and gorgeous all at the same time work on on behalf of the animals and i i'm so thrilled that you were on the show janine thank i'm you so, so grateful much. to you thank the, you so much for having me it's my my absolute honor and pleasure i i have one last question and if you've listened to the uh, episodes you know what the question is so i have one last question that i ask everybody who comes on the show and it's a silly question but i find that it yields poignant answers and the question is this if you had an airplane that could skywrite anything for the whole world to see, what would you say? I would say live from your heart and share that love with all living beings. That's succinct. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it. encompasses everything, right? I think it does. I think it does. And, and it's so, uh, it's such a, it's, again, it's poignant. It's a poignant reminder that we can, that every single one of us can do that at any time. That's one thing, that's one thing that I, I would love to sort of say right now, actually, is that you can change. You can yeah. change your mind. You can change your behavior. Believe me, if you knew how, how much of a hardcore carnivore I was, I wasn't even an omnivore when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. And now I'm a hardcore vegan, you know. Yes, yes, we can all, yes. You know, we can all, and and this is not about judgment. I'm not going, you must do this. But I, right. but I am saying that if you decide that you want to look at any, anything in yourself, in your life, in your work, and make changes, then the first step is becoming aware that you want to make changes, sort of knowing yourself and, yep. and. For me, that has been The Artist's Way from, by Julia Cameron, writing my little morning pages since 1997. Wow. And also uh, meditation. Like I, I am such a, an advocate for finding even five minutes a day, doesn't yeah. have to be long, yes. to breathe, to, to center yourself and to breathe and to just be with, your, with yourself. So, and I know, I love Janine that you said that you do that because I'm, I go, well, of course she does. Yes, that makes total sense. So, <laughs> so I'm so grateful that you're doing the work you're doing on behalf of the animals. And thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you for last week's episode was Captain Paul Watson. He would not have been on the show without you tagging me and saying, oh, my stars, oh. <laughs> you have to get in touch with him. So thank you so much for doing of that. Of course, you got you have the same heart. And also I wanna thank Liel because um, if Liel did not tag you in a post, she connected you and I. Yes, she did. That's absolutely right. Yes, yes, yes. That's so fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I love these little relationships that are, they, it's it's like it's like a beautiful it's like a beautiful web. It really is. I love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. Love and Gloria it. started it. So there yes. we go. <laughs> so we're doing all this. Sh this is the shout out portion of the show. This is a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Give a shout out to the peeps. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Janine. This has been the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I am Isolde Trachtenberg. If you're enjoying the show, please do me a favor, leave a review on the Apple Podcast website for the show. 
Let me know what you're thinking. I would love to hear from you about what you think, uh, what you want the show to be, because in many ways it's about, it's driven very much by the people who listen. So until next time, I remind you to listen, learn, laugh, and love a whole lot. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new. And if you like what you're hearing, please review it and rate it and let other people know. And if you'd like to be a sponsor of the show, I'd love to meet you on patreon.com slash innovative mindset. I also have lots of exclusive goodies to share just with the show's supporters there. Today's episode was produced by Zolda Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results results. Although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living in your innovative mindset.